my name is Peter Gay Watson. I'm a 22-year-old student at the University of the West Indies, pursuing my bachelor's degree in banking, finance, and economics. I, in the daytime, I work as an office admin, office um, administrative assistant, and I'm an entrepreneur. My business is called Good Cosmetics. It's a Jamaican vegan and cruelty-free cosmetics line that offers a healthier beauty alternative. I think that Jamaica in itself, it's, it's an experience. Being Jamaican is an experience. It's a passion. And I wanted to create something that was uniquely Jamaican. We have eyeshadow palettes and highlighters, um, blush palettes, and we have mascaras and eyeliners. What we do is we package them in a beautiful rose gold package and we ship them out through Jamaica Post. Currently we're operating um, from, well, my house. Uh, the team consists of my two friends, Kevon Allen and Danny Campbell, and we separate tasks to get it done. So Kevon is involved with the finance aspect, while Danny, she's more artsy, so she goes into the marketing sector and making the beautiful posters that we do have. And we work as a close-knit family, you know, to make the dream of good cosmetics a reality. The biggest mistake I made was not creating that team before, you know, entering into the process to, you know, delegate tasks to help things well, it's a bit faster uh, to not be doing everything on my own to have it, the process slowed down and now that I have a team you know it's all fun and games going forward <laughs> my typical day starts at 5 a.m I wake up I go over some notes until about 6 30 I get to work for 9 I am at work between 9 and 4 or 9 and 5 depending I leave work I go to UWE I go to class from 6 to 9 then I get home at 10 I do some studying, uh, work on good cosmetics, I'm in bed by 12 and I do it all over again. <laughs> you know, as a kid I wanted to be, oh, so many transitions. I wanted to be a doctor at one point and then in the mix I always knew that I wanted to own my business. So if I was a doctor then I was going to own a hospital. You know, because it makes sense. I started out with a group of persons at the Junior Achievement Program at the Ministry of Education and I made some, some great people, brilliant. Um, persons who aspire to be entrepreneurs and you know within that entrepreneur spirit and that process you're like I want to create something as well you know this is awesome at first I thought about creating an acne skincare line because as a teenager I always struggle with acne until sometimes now we were doing that for a while and then you know based on the scope of what I wanted in terms of having it full vegan they couldn't pursue that scope as yet so the transition with that idea in mind because I'm always thinking big is that if I start with this skincare line then I'm going to go into makeup so I flipped the switch and I've started with makeup but to get things off the ground and to get it moving I went to the Institute of Law and Economics they have an innovation lab called DIA lab and they actually have yearly annually a series of you know young entrepreneurs pitching for a grant of a hundred thousand dollars so of course good cosmetics was there and of course you know we went ahead we went to, to their boot camp and I pitched and I won that $100,000, which was the first set of grant funding for Good Cosmetics. So for the website, uh, I went ahead and said, okay, you know, instead of outsourcing this to website development, I can build this. You know, I can watch a couple YouTube videos and I can do this. So I went ahead and I created our website from scratch. It was a very long journal process that I doubt I'll be doing again, but <laughs> Along the way, it was really exciting to see it come together. When we officially launched and I made my first sale, you know, there were real tears because, you know, somebody bought the product for the first time. <laughs> and, you know, after all those sleepless nights, after all that research going in, after all that testing, you know, bringing in samples, checking to see if it worked, and to see that it's finally here and it works for real, for real, then, you know, it's a whole, it's a whole other world. So five years from now, I see Good Cosmetics being a household name within the Caribbean and even internationally because, you know, whatever Jamaicans do, we do it well. <laughs> and I also see us doing a lot of philanthropic work um, in terms of starting the Good Foundation to help women, even women and men throughout the world, you know, um, to show them different beauty alternatives, to assist in whatever way we can. I've never felt that people um, would never take me seriously because even before I was 21, I've always been mature for my age. That's how I am. If I say that I'm going to do something, I don't like going back and say, you know, what if I had done? I'd rather do it and it falls through. And I'm like, okay, well, at least you tried. I have a lot of romance. I love Oprah. I just feel like, I just love Oprah. She's just, she's 
she embodies, you know, a woman who has gone after what she wants, regardless of the circumstance. She, I've also learned from her, like, you know, willing your dreams into reality, which is one of the things that is all about, like, willing it into reality. And I was there, I was like, okay, if Oprah can win, will that into reality and be where she is now, then I'm about to will good cosmetics into reality. <laughs> the Jamaican school system with itself is, it's awesome, you know, it's really challenging and rigorous, but there are still things that can be improved upon. So in high school, you know, I feel like the school system teaches you how to be an employee, a very good employee, a loyal employee, but nothing really, you know, shows you how to be an employer or how to create a business. And nobody told me this, but running a business is the hardest thing you'll ever do in life. <laughs> it is the hardest thing you'll ever do in life. I didn't know that it was this challenging. Uh, some nights I'm like, okay, I'm really shocked. <laughs> so, I had a lot of support. My mother said, you're going to do it anyway, so just do it. <laughs> the support system at UWE, I think it's, since, of, since recently, they've really facilitated young entrepreneurs. They have had, you know, the entrepreneurship competitions that I'm currently in. They have it annually and they do offer funding and it also offers students upon an opportunity to pitch to, you know, real venture capitalists, persons that, you know, would provide equity into their business. Currently, the, I mean, the economic environment in Jamaica, um, interest rates are at all time low. Um, the only challenge that I'm having with that is that even though interest rates are low, they're not being diversified in terms of funds are not being spread out to as many, you know, entrepreneurs as it could be. So that's one thing that I think, you know, could be improved upon in terms of just making the loans more diversified so that persons entrepreneurs specifically they can be able to access these funds i also think that there should be facilities that for the average person who you know have a small business that they should be able to fix up their accounting systems you know that so they can access funds and have these training and workshops for them to understand because an average man will run his business you know the money coming in the money going out you're doing your your, your debits and your credits but you know in terms of having recordings of those things to have further funding you know that's lacking within the system my advice for a potential entrepreneur is just start so don't get stuck in the research process but don't under research you know you have to strike a balance in terms of but don't over research and be like i have to do this first i have to do this first once you think that you've had adequate you know sufficient information to go ahead start it and i promise you'll learn everything along the way seek opportunities and go full force Ensure that at the end of the day, you can say, I wish I had done this 10 years from now. Do it now, and if it doesn't work out, go into your next venture. I'm sure you'll be more knowledgeable of that work. My name is Yakini Wallen Bryan, CEO and founder of a company called Prelabs Limited. I'm also doing my master's part time at the University of Western in electronics engineering. Uh, the product that we're most known for right now is PowerPre, a device and app that allows people to monitor and control the electrical appliances from anywhere in the world from their smartphone or their computer. So, with PowerPre, you can see what your energy consumption is like, not just in watts, but in terms that people can understand dollars and also being able to turn on or off an AC or a fan or lights from anywhere in the world from the smartphone at the press of a button. Well, right now, if you would like a PowerPre, you can email us at info at prelabs.com. Um, we'll give you a free consultation and quote. We'll do a site visit. and We can tell you exactly how much you, um, what it's gonna to take to actually get it installed. Um, it installs just like any regular switch and just about any electrician can install it. Um, but once they're installed, um, once all you need is an active Wi-Fi connection. 
and then it's just plug and play from there. Or the solution is really just in the problem of people constantly leaving appliances on, not understanding exactly how much their appliances are costing them in, in the form of dollars, and not really having a means to, to turn things off or control them effectively. Uh, right now our team is kind of small, it comprises of me, um, a business partner and senior product developer Kristen Kong, as well as a small team of admin assistant and marketing officer. Time management with my MPhil has always been something that's been a bit difficult. Um, to be honest, it, it really is just depending on how much of the company is actually happening at the time. Sometimes it's really hectic, right now it's a really hectic period, so my masters gets neglected. As a kid I never really saw myself as an entrepreneur, in fact, even in high school, I never saw myself as an entrepreneur. In fact, when I just started this company, I never saw myself as an entrepreneur. I really just like making things that solve problems. I think when it comes to electronics and product development on a whole, I've always had kind of a, a gravity towards it and a affinity towards it. You know, I've always been involved with robotics at university. I'm still the coach of the robotics team there. I um, spent a lot of my, my time over these past years with the robotics team. Um, and working in a team that are in an environment where we have strict deadlines, um, high stakes, um, trying to figure out how we can make the best robot with minimal funding um, has kind of created an environment that allowed me to kind of think about working on projects on a whole, um, trying to do something that no one's ever done. Power Pre was back in 2016. It was really something that I made off of having some experience of tinkering with a few devices for electronics club at the university and just some things on my own. Um, entered that prototype in the CCIC Green Tech competition back in 2016. The CCIC Green Tech Startup Bootcamp competition was really a three-day workshop and then the last day they had a pitch competition where you basically took everything that you learned over the past three days and pitched to a series of um, judges and investors and then they chose the winner based on that. I had to do a business model that would revolve around the product and how we'd actually solve a problem, how you can actually make a sustainable business off of it. Um, and that's when the company started. When we went to the competition in 2016, we won that competition, we got accepted into the Accelerator program, received some grant funding courtesy of the World Bank as well, and it's, it's, it's been a, a way since then. One of the first things we had to do um, after we won the competition was really work out a business model, figure out who our customers are going to be, how large is our customer segment, what is the pain they were actually solving, um, what, what features of our product are the most important, um, which key partnerships do we have to actually establish? And one of the first things I actually had to do with my team at the time was to just go out there and talk to people. I literally went door to door in New Kingston to different business places asking them what their problems are and figure out if what we were developing was anywhere near what their problem actually was. After fleshing out the business model and what it is that the product really needs to have, we spend about the better part of the next two years um, really doing the necessary product development to actually have something that will comply with international standards. Uh, and now I spend most of my time doing less engineering things and more business things um, just by the nature of what, what, it, what, it, what, it, what the job takes. Five years from now, um, where I see pre loves is not just with Paul Pre. By then I hope Paul Pre would have been a household name, not just household but business, Airbnb, but really and truly Paul Pre is just one of many products that we're working on that we plan to actually launch and have integrated into people's lives. So we're hoping by then to have at least four other products um, that add to our suite of solutions that we offer to the um, workspace, the homes. And yeah, we hope to be a major player for tech innovation in the region. There definitely is a challenge in um, interacting with people as an entrepreneur when you're young. Um, whether it's an entrepreneur or an engineer, there is a bit of a, I want to say, reluctancy with, um, or skepticism with um, what they think you're capable of or what you say you can do but we found that we've always been able to get over that simply by showcasing what we've done you know we're a young team yes but there's no discounting all the things that we have accomplished with very little funding compared to other bigger companies the best advice i can give will probably be two things um don't allow yourself to give up very easily and always listen to what the market is telling you. I've had so many role models um, getting to this point. Um, I've pulled from various different places. My number one role model, of course, are my parents. Um, they both teach me two different things. My dad teaches me how to think, my mom teaches me how to plan and, and um, be compassionate. There are a lot of things I feel our educational system could improve on when it comes to problem solving. 
I think a lot of it is about, you know, plotting for exams and trying to pass, but not a whole lot of emphasis or rewards are placed or means are placed to actually develop people's um, problem solving skill set. I think there have been recently some good initiatives put in place to encourage some small businesses, the removal of the minimum business tax, the increasing of the GCP threshold. Um, there are more things that I think could be done, um, maybe more leniency to the banking system because um, while there might be some improvements from a tax perspective, banks are still a huge issue for a small business to deal with, especially that startup. Um, just, just the necessary paperwork that might be applicable to a huge business is, is, isn't, is just not the same model for a small startup. If I hadn't started this business and working on this product, I would probably be, I probably would have looked for internship overseas. To be honest with you, the engineering job locally don't really entice me that much. Can't see myself doing anything else. Um, as much as it stresses me out, as much as I lose sleep over it, um, I think that what I'm doing right now is what I love. And I get more and more validation for doing it each day. I know it's something that people want. When a customer tells me that they love the product or uh, just the feedback that I get, um, it, it helps drive and pushes everything no matter how hard I get. Um, so no, I don't have any regrets, none whatsoever. Our slogan says we are the people's station. And for more than 10 years, PBCJ has been providing unique content to this growing market. Let us show you how we can serve you. We are small compared to our competitors, but it's our size that gives us the ability to dedicate ourselves to our clients. We move your project from concept to completion, keeping our activities in-house so we can make decisions in a timely and efficient manner. We have a creative, energetic, and youthful team ready to take your ideas to the next level. So what can we do for you? PBCJ has mastered the art of feature presentations, studio interviews, and PSAs. We also stand ready to create content for your social media platforms and make your message accessible anywhere, anytime. We also provide streaming for your conferences, seminars, and workshops. And guess what? You don't have to break the bank because our fees are some of the most competitive in the market. And just when you thought it couldn't get any better, we air it free. You heard right, we air it free for you. So call the PBCJ at 876-754-7225 or email us at production at pbcjamaica.org. We are waiting to serve you. My name is Shawnee Bailey. Um, I'm a full-time entrepreneur. The name of my business is called Zarabel. Actor. Zarabel is seven years old this year, and uh, we're a talent agency. Talent agency, first of all, includes voice talent, commercial talent, so billboards. So a lot of times you see things on the billboard and on TV. That's a job, you need to find those people. <laughs> so we provide those persons. We have a database of over 600 talents, male, female, all sizes. Call them talents, but it's really the cast that you see in the different productions and commercials. And then we also do production services. That would be craft services. Craft services is usually the individual or crew on location that ensures there's hydration and snacks on set to make sure everybody's good. And we also provide style crew, which is the makeup, hair, wardrobe on location. So, you know, the whole package deal, because usually they're kind of, they come together. So that's what Zara will do. And for international clients, we do actually assist them with film permits and um, fixers. If you are doing a commercial or a production, you know, we have those services in play for individuals in that industry. So advertising agencies, production houses, etc. Those are the main target audience that we cater to for, for our services. When Beyonce and Jay-Z was here, we actually assisted with finding talent on that as well. And um, We've worked with Sean Paul. Uh, uh, we've done a lot of corporate brands locally. A lot of the corporate brands that you see, you know, Digital, Flow, etc. We've actually worked with literally all of them. It's a small team, but I'm very, it's very, it's, we're like a family, so I'm grateful. 
For me, my typical day is like what Oprah would say, where she wakes up at 5 a.m. and she's all ready and I'm prepared. Personally, I'm not a morning person. Let's just get that out of the way. I don't like 5 a.m. I don't like 6 a.m. I, I start my day at 9 to 10 a.m. I'm doing what I need to do on the laptop and I, I, I don't go for long bursts at a time. So I'm like an hour. I work for an hour, stop, run an errand, sleep. I do like to take nap. <laughs> they refresh you and I sleep. I stay up very late in the night. So it's good to take naps in between. Guys, there's nothing to, like, not pioneering. It's not Oprah's schedule, but it works for me. I like to have it a bit more haphazard because it doesn't feel like a routine for me. As a kid, my dream job was to be an orthopedic surgeon, to be honest. And that rooted from the fact that I, I am disabled. My right leg is obviously shorter than my left. And when I was younger, I did a lot of surgeries and etc. So that kind of, at the time, inspired me to, do, to want to be an orthopedic surgeon. Then I switched to wanting to be a marketer. My dream job was to be a marketing executive at Digital. And then I actually enrolled in UTech in marketing to get a marketing degree. I decided to discontinue and pursue entrepreneurship instead. My journey as an entrepreneur started a long time. When I was in high school, I was selling candy. So I was doing a lot of things that are, there are things that I tried a lot. And then the opportunity for Zabel is, I would say it's more of an opportunity per se than a brainchild because um, I remember there was a friend of mine she was working with I, another person to open an agency. I tell it, it no, this was a modeling agency this time. So she was telling me about it because I'm very interested in entrepreneurship. So I was excited. So while I was there at her house talking about it, her father actually suggested that we partner together instead and start the business. And that's kind of how Zarbel came about. And we started out as a modeling agency actually with friends. <laughs> and um, I think we started with like 12 people. And we had a whole photo shoot at our house, the co-founder's house and everything. It was, it was, it was a different time. Because I remember my first wage from Zarbel was $500 for the month. That was it. And it, even though it was so small, it was still nice to know that there is something that I've worked hard at that is giving me something at the end of the month. Fast forward, we added a third partner and fast forward some more. The original co-founder that I mentioned, she decided to take on another venture. And then it was just me and my other business partner. And then, no, it's just me. <laughs> and then I decided to just stay in Darbel because as I've always said, entrepreneurship is like in me, like it's me. So I've always seen the vision and I know where I want Darbel to be. So I decided to stay on. So it's just me now. Darbel pivoted from being a modeling agency to being what it is now, which is a talent agency and a production service provider. Sometimes that's what it is with business. Sometimes you make a decision at the start, but then what is what does the market really need? So it was more like a market need while we pivoted. To be honest, I am one of those persons that don't really plan initially. It's not the best thing to do, I must admit, but I always believe when you plan so much, you never start. So the plan is, okay, so if I have $50 and I have one debit card and I just need this amount of people to start, then I start. That's kind of how I got it done. Where I see Zarbel in the next five years, um, expanding on our services regionally. That's something I've definitely yeah, I've written down, I've been working on planning, etc. Um, because we have this, this infrastructure, we just need to build it out a bit better. So the main goal for the next five years is to be regional. That's the main goal. Let's get that out of the way. I think being young in the industry, at the, well, I'm still young because I'm 26 now, but I started at 18. That definitely made a difference because it's like, what's this 18 year old doing? She doesn't know anything. You just have to work harder. But with everything that you want, you know, working hard is a part of it. So I, did, I wouldn't say I was disadvantaged for sure. Because this industry is filled with young people. My main role model right now is actually Kimala Bennett. She owns a production lab. I think her drive and how she gets things done. And she just, and she's a, of course a female as well. So, and she's just killing it, you know. I'm very grateful for my mom because she supported me for the for the couple months and such when I wasn't making any wage. One thing I would say to any entrepreneur, even if you can't afford an accountant right now, because I couldn't afford an accountant at the start, write down all what you spend. Make sure you save all your receipts. Use things online. There, there, there's no, no, you don't have to actually take out a ledger and write it down manually. You can go to like a waveapp.com or a QuickBooks and just record what you spend. Because at the end of the day, when you're looking for a loan, when you're looking for people to invest, the first thing they're gonna ask you for is your financials. And 
It's gonna be more expensive when an accountant has to create it than when you have data for them to manipulate. I feel like there should be a, a class Maybe every other week is a different topic where it tells you that you must file taxes, like it, it happens, like you need to have those things. Things that are, when you leave, okay, when you leave, make sure you, 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 you know how to put your books together. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like a diff different things. How to get a rent lease, how to find an apartment, how to, you know what I'm saying? Like there's re how to budget. I have to learn that the hard way. <laughs> so, you know, how to manage credit cards because it's, it's coming and a lot of times people take a credit card and they think they're just spend 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 but you have to pay it back and a lot of them don't realize that they have to pay it back now they're in debt so the curriculum i think should have something about real life do i regret going into business no i enjoy it and i think because i have such a solid support system my boyfriend my my mom you know just etc like close friends i enjoy what i do so much i i enjoy the freedom and it's not that much freedom, you know, by the way. Entrepreneurship is not freedom as you guys think, okay? Because though I have freedom, I'm always working. So, I, but I do like the flexibility. That's the better word. I'm very flexible though. So that's the better word. Uh, I don't regret it. I enjoy it a lot. I like to see that when I look back one year prior to now, I can say, oh, okay, I was stuck at this, but no, I'm actually, it's here, it's done. I've done it, I've did it. I'm always thinking, how can I do better? How can I innovate? Yes, we're doing this service, but can we do it better? Maybe, how do we stand out? So I'm always thinking on my toes. So that's something good for entrepreneurship and it's also good for working at a business.